in this video, I am reviewing the 7 Hz X Critical Soundnotes Dioco Planar Magnetic Headset or earphones or IEMs, whatever you like to call it. Let's get it. What's cracking, audio fans? It's David here from Prime Audio Reviews. That is the box for the Dioco Planar headset, and I like it because it's not too big, but there's a good bundle of stuff inside, starting or beginning with this lovely case here. Now, um, I've probably only got one pair of shorts with pockets big enough to put that into, so not very practical in terms of pocketability, but it's a nice case. It's got this sort of felt lining in here. You can actually take that part out if you want and use it. You could put a dap in there and your, your IEM. So yeah, that is a nice touch. You get a nice selection of very colorful ear tips in there. Now let's have a look at these earphones. So. Solonauts Yoko, $99. These feature a 14.6 millimeter planar magnetic driver. Now you've probably seen photos of these or at the very least you've seen the thumbnail. So you know that these are, um, yeah. <laughs> they're a bit unusual in terms of appearance. They're a bit gaudy in my opinion. I feel a bit like a bloody witch doctor or a, a back alley fortune teller when I'm wearing these that feel like big baubles in my ears but some people might like the style personally I am not a fan at all but uh, apart from that they are actually quite comfortable and they fit in my ears nicely so that's going to be maybe polarizing I don't know maybe I'm overreacting but uh, yeah it's, it's a bit unusual Let's have a look at this cable real quick because it's a very nice cable. Silver plated, oxygen free copper of course, but it's um, it's there's nothing special about it, but it just handles nicely, doesn't have microphonics, doesn't really get too tangled, and overall, yeah, I think that is a pretty good thing to bundle with these IMs. So I did predict this a while ago, I don't know where I said it, whether it was on video or in a forum or where it was but I predicted that by the end of 2022 we would see sub $100 planar magnetic IEMs and here we are and I believe there's a C CCA, CCA planar coming soon so expect that to be even cheaper maybe who knows well, there are so many planar IEMs now that for me at least the novelty is pretty much worn off when I see new planar magnetic I'm like okay I'm interested but you know it's not exciting as it once was now we're going to see them everywhere they're being mass the drivers are being mass produced bringing the costs right down which means just about anyone can afford to bring out budget uh, or entry level planar magnetic earphones if you're familiar with Critical's preferences when it comes to tuning, you won't be surprised to hear the Dioco is tuned largely for clarity and technical proficiency. This is both positive and negative effects on the sound, which we'll cover momentarily. But um, first, the Dioco overall has a fairly balanced and mature sound signature with an emphasis on speed and the aforementioned clarity. I'd call the overall tonality somewhat neutral. It's a relatively easy IEM to drive. We'll throw up the graph now and let's have a look at that. So you can see fairly balanced, um, a bit jiggity jaggedy on the, on the highs there. That is pretty ordinary. It's a common occurrence in planar IEMs. But let's move on now to the bass. The bass is similar to that of many recent IEMs. And by that, I mean, it has an elevated sub bass with a punchy but sort of insubstantial mid bass. It's got satisfying planar driver speed, but it often feels watered down and it lacks overall impact. Leading edges of bass notes are well defined, but kick drums peter out quickly and bass notes in general lose inertia too quickly. Sub bass notes feel disproportionately large and powerful compared to the mid bass, which in my opinion lacks weight and body. 
Then we've got the mid-range, and I'd say the mid-range is the Oko's strongest area. It's up front and clear, with good spacing and instrument separation. This is bolstered by an accurate, fairly accurate tone, and an abundance of clean air between instruments. Vocals sound fairly natural, and are presented with a satisfying mix of clarity and just enough body to get by. There's a good amount of forwardness and vitality to both male and female vocals without any shoutiness in the upper mids. I do feel that the transients of the Dioko are a little bit too fast. They're just not quite rounded enough for me. It doesn't sound quite natural. Vocals actually come out sounding pretty nice, even despite the lean note size, but it's more so with instruments that those, the speed of the transients is just a little bit too fast. Moving on now to the treble, and the treble is a bit of a mixed bag for me. On one hand, it provides ample detail and plenty of width to the stage. On the other hand, there are moments of sharpness and some occasional sibilance. Furthermore, percussion attacks are a little too sharp. Most of the emphasis is on the opening of the note, which then falls off too abruptly, leaving you with this sort of stunted note that's been cut off a bit too fast. However, it's fine for the most part, and it's not anywhere near as scary as it looks on the graph. The soundstage is wide and has good spacing, but it has a very limited amount of depth. As a result, the stage lacks a sense of scale and immersion. Left and right stereo imaging is good, but there is very little in the way of layering in terms of the depth and positioning. It's a kind of a very two-dimensional presentation. The sound is presented in a wide, flat plane rather than an elliptical or a rounded space. The Oko's resolving ability, however, is very good for an IEM in this price range. A couple of quick comparisons now, and we will start, of course, with the 7 Hz Timeless. Now, the Timeless here is more than double the price of the Dioko. Besides the noticeable physical differences, they're both big, they're both chunky. I feel more comfortable wearing the, wearing the Timeless here but these two also differ in tonality. The Timeless is slightly more V-shaped, having additional lower mid-range and upper mids presence. As a result, the Timeless has a warmer and a more robust kind of sound. On the contrary, the Oko's leaner mid-range and upper bass bring the treble forward, making it a brighter, giving it a brighter tone. Timeless's bass is more authoritative and it carries more weight. It doesn't have as much clarity in the mids as the Dioko, but the Timeless mids are richer and to my ears more natural. The Timeless isn't as edgy or sibilant in the treble either because the Dioko does have occasional sibilance and it does have some sharpness in the highs. Timeless's soundstage is even wider than Dioko's, but both create that sort of the same kind of two-dimensional flat space and they both lack depth. In terms of overall resolution, they're on about the same level. Um, but overall, I think the Timeless is the better IEM, but you've got to keep in mind that this is like 200 and whatever, 216, $212, and the Dioko is 99. Next up, we will look at the Let Shua S12. The S12 here comes in at $152, so it's significantly more, you know, 50% more than the Dioko here. It's obviously got a more standard shell shape. It's considerably smaller in size than the Dioko. But just like the Timeless, the S12 has more fullness in its upper bass and lower mid-range, and this gives notes extra body and warmth compared to the Dioko, which is rather lean in its presentation. The S12's bass is punchier and more authoritative, especially in the middle and upper bass. Vocals are richer and more powerful on the S12. Mid-range resolution is similar on both IEMs, but the Dioko is slightly more revealing when it comes to details mainly because of that attenuated bass and the, the leaner lower mids. Although both of these 
IEMs have an energetic treble. The S12 is more controlled and it's pretty much free of sibilance. In addition to having more natural note size, the S12 has a better quality soundstage as well. It's got more depth and layering, allowing for better imaging and immersion in the music. Both are good value for money, but I think if you really want a good planar IEM, it's worth spending the extra for the S12 unless you're really endeared to the visual styling of the Dioko, and in that case, more power to you. So to sum up, the 7 Hertz Critical Cell Notes Dioko has a lot to offer at its price point, I think. It's a highly resolving and it's a detailed IEM that bristles with clarity and forwardness. On top of that, it comes with an excellent stock cable and a very nice case and accessories. If you've been wanting to get yourself a planar IEM but you sort of didn't want to cross that $100 threshold, then this is uh, just what you've been waiting for, assuming you don't mind having these uh, big gaudy baubles sticking out of your ears. So I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it the old thumbs up. Um, Parfam audio file style. Check out the links in the description. I've got a link to the full written review. Check out my Patreon if you want to support the channel. Come and join us on Discord and have a chat with us there. And um, if you are new to the channel and you want to see more content like this, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And until next time, see you later.